sailing around Black Desert, you'll often encounter a sea monster or two, but did you know you can make millions killing sea monsters or just get some goodies to help with sailing like upgrading those ships or just getting those sailing artifacts? Welcome back to the channel all about life skilling. My name is Teddy and today I'll be showing you why sea monster hunting can make a nice amount of money or help get those carrots faster. So if you've been struggling getting the buttering done for those upgrade materials needed or just want to make some more money on the side, jump on those boats and let's set sail for some sea monster hunting. Sea monster hunting around the ocean in Black Desert is a great way to earn the extra money on the side while also having a chance to drop an artifact to increase the experience earned while sailing around the islands. With being asked to make a guide on sea monster hunting and how to get a carrick faster, sea monster hunting is a great option and a nice break from the usual life scaling. But what makes hunting sea monsters important to any sailor or those looking to get started with bartering are the materials they sometimes have a chance of dropping. From the materials needed to upgrade the Bartali sailboat to the carricks, these guys have a chance of dropping them with the younger sea monsters having a slightly reduced loot pool. Most of the sea monsters can be soloed with the harder ones needing a friend to help out, but keep in mind, having two boats will kill the monsters quicker and earn more money, but depending on the ship, most monsters can still be killed solo. So for you to make sure you can kill as quickly as possible, using a Euphoria frigate line will be the better option here, but if you're like me and didn't make one, the Euphoria sailboat upgraded to the Carava with enhanced green grade ship parts are able to compete with the Euphoria frigates. There are a variety of sea monsters to hunt down, all in their own habitats and their own young variants like the Hikaru, Ocean Stalker, Nine Shark, Canadums, and the Saltwater Crocs. For a harder challenge, there are group sea monsters too, like the Lacretion. Not only are there sea monsters to hunt down, but there are ghost ships and pirate ships that can be killed for more upgrade materials, artifacts, and just money in general. For the ships on the lower end, we have the ghost ships, with the gold mont battleships being small, medium, and large, all ranging in difficulty. But after you got your ship ready for hunting, let's get into where to find all these sea monsters. Taking a look at the hungry sea monster locations, we have the Hakaru and the Ocean Stalkers. Hungry Hakaru and the Hungry Ocean Stalkers can all be found around the island. They are smaller when spotting at a glance. The young Hakaru and young Ocean Stalkers can be found around the islands like here, south of Ellie Island, south of Pirate Island here, and just below Aqua's Eye. Normal Hakaru and normal Ocean Stalkers can also be found near and around the young habitats, but for those looking to hunt down each of their own in their own habitats, the Hakaru habitats can be found northeast of the Crow's Nest here and between the two Ocean Stalker habitats. These are the only two ocean stalker habitats, but others can be found speaking of Croix in Velio as daily as to kill a normal or young Hikaru or ocean stalker. Also, the soldier out here in Aquila's eye has dailies that can be accepted to kill the normal Hikaru or ocean stalker if you want the extra sailing experience or materials. These also will give you their locations on your map too. The young nine sharks can be found northwest of Aquila's eye here. Their normal versions can also be found around Magoria. Both versions are aggressive when you get close, unlike the Hikaru and ocean stalker so be careful. Next on the list is the Canadums. The young version can be found east of where the young nine sharks can be found, and the normal Canadum habitat can be located just north past where Vel is. Like the nine sharks, these guys will attack you on sight. Really quick, let me know down in the comments if you enjoy killing sea monsters, or if you choose to leech off of other players instead. While you're down there, be sure to leave a like if you're enjoying all the life skilling content here on the channel. Moving on to the Black Rust. Young Black Rust habitat can be found here in Magoria, northeast of the Pirate Island. The normal Black Rust can be found here too, so be careful. The regular versions also can be found sailing south here. For those who have a friend, can head east of where Port Rat used to be to find the saltwater crocodiles. These are aggressive and either require a carrot to solo or another player helping out. The last monster that can be hunted down is the Crescent. These guys require more than one person but also provide the best rewards if the time is taken to get the ship and friends together. Ravikil also has dailies that can be accepted from Aqua's Eye to hunt down either the younger or normal version of all three Nine Shark, Canadium, and the Black. Rust. Alongside the monsters, we have to take a look at the ships that can be killed. The lowest ships to take down are going to be the Cox Pirate Shadow Ghost ships. These have a small chance of spawning around the young sea monster habitats around the islands. Cursed Pirate ships can be found around the Arsha Sea, and much like the Ghost Pirate ships, these will spawn randomly but at a higher rate than the normal ghost ships. The next ghost ships are the Magoria Ghost ships. These will randomly spawn around Magoria and have no set location. Bonus quests can be obtained to hunt down the ghost ships when using the explore option while bartering. Pirate ships are easier to find starting off with the small gold mont battleships. These can be found all around the entrance to Magoria and are smaller but will still attack on site. Moving further into Magoria has the medium gold mont battleships. These spawn randomly around the middle of the ocean until hitting Nampo Harbor. Once around Nampo Harbor are the larger and harder to kill gold mont large battleships. These will start spawning all the way around to the saltwater crocs. Dias has dailies to kill either the large or small battleships too for more experience and ship upgrade materials. It's to be noted that the 
size and the title of the sea monster will dictate the loot it can drop with the hungry and young sea monsters dropping minor loot being easier to kill and smaller in size. The larger the sea monster and further into Megoria you go, the better the materials drop, the harder the monsters are to kill, and with their massive size. But now that you know where to find them, why should you start hunting down these sea monsters? Like previously mentioned, sea monsters drop a lot of great loot for those looking to start sailing easier or bartering faster. Not only are they great for the ship upgrade materials or the Sethra artifacts, sea monsters drop their own guild drops that can be sold for a lot of silver if the time is taken, provided you're in a guild. Young Hikaru drop blue spirit essence, mana stone, cobalt ingot, brilliant blackstone, sea monster spirit pouch, and the young Hikaru spike. The young ocean stalkers have almost the same loot with being able to drop the deep sea memory filled glue instead of the cobalt and the young ocean stalker skin instead. Hikaru have the better materials I can drop but the cox pirate artifacts, parlay beginner and expert, luminous cobalt ingot, pure pearl crystal, enhanced island tree coated plywood, great ocean dark iron, again the blue spirit essence and mana stone, and then finally the guild drops which is the main way to make money with sea monster hunting, the Hikaru spike, monster spirit pouch, and with the 1% chance of getting the amethyst Hikaru spike. Ocean stalkers much like the younger drop the same items with the ocean stalker skin replacing the spike and the amethyst Hikaru spike being replaced with the equally valued ocean stalker whisker. Moving on to the young black rust, these have a chance of dropping the same materials as the Hikaru instead of the verdant black stones as that these have a chance of dropping the fiery black stones and the young black rust jawbone. As for the normal black rust, these drop the brilliant rock salt ingot, blue spirit essence, mana stone, and a chance for a merchant ring piece, a shimmering piece of the old moon, violent sea monster bone, ooze, and scale, all needed to make the character ship parts, and lastly, the guild black rust hung for another 100k silver. Young nine shark sport the same materials as the Hikaru and black rust, only with dropping young nine shark horn fragments instead. The regular nine sharks have the same loot table as the black rust with the nine sharks horn fragments instead, a chance of a brilliant pearl shard, and the sought after nine sharks fin if you're lucky. Kenadims are next with the young version also having a chance to drop the ocean stalker's loot table but with the young canadum shell instead of the skin. The regular version drops the same loot table as both the black rust and nine sharks combined but drops a steel canadum shell, regular canadum shell, and the young canadum shell. The saltwater crocodiles have a shorter loot table. These guys will drop the blue spirit essence, the violent sea monster's bone, ooze, and scale, a saltwater croc scale, and lastly the main reason to farm these guys, the moss covered map. Lacrishins are the last monster with the same violent sea monster items and blue spirit essence, but the Lacrishin dropped the Zilatia, Cerny, and Eltro crystals with the Zilatia crystals being a Lakisharan drop exclusive. Let's move on to the ships that can be hunted down, starting with the lower Crocs Pirate Shadow Ghost. These just dropped the Ghost Summon Scroll piece to summon a slightly harder ship with more materials, a Cox Pirate's Broken Cannon, usable pirate ship remains, and lastly, Wrecked Phantom Ship's Debris. Cursed Pirate Ships are the next in the list, with dropping a Blue Spirit Essence Mana Stone Verdant Blackstone and the Phantom Ship Remains. Small Goldmont battleships are found at the entrance to Megoria. These have the smallest loot table only dropping Blue Essence, Goldmont Pirate Golden Coin, or Golden Goblet. The medium battleships are located in the middle of the Megoria Sea and drop the same as the small battleships at the entrance. These drop the Brilliant Pearl Shards, Ruddy Manganese Nodule, the Cox Pirate Artifacts Parlet Expert, Luminous Cobalt Ingot, Tie-Dyed Standardized Timber Squares, Claw the Waves, and a Goldmont Vigilance and Golden Pirate Coin. The last ship, of course, is going to be the hardest Goldmont large battleships. These drop the Tear of the Ocean, Brilliant Pearl Shards, and Rock Salt Ingots, Deep Tie Dyed Standardized Timber Squares, the Elaborate Pearl Necklace, which vendors for 30 mil, Moon Vein Flex Fabric, Claws of the Waves, the Eltro Crystal, lastly the Goldmont Pirate Coin. Along with the loot, each monster gives sailing experience too for those needing another way to level sailing faster. So now getting on to how to make money with sea monster hunting. And the best way to make money sea monster hunting is to farm the guild drops to sell to a guild vendor or or just a vendor the items if you're not in a guild. These can range from 10k silver all the way up to 100k silver with some rare drops being able to make 30 mil alone. The green grade guild drops are usually the lowest being able to make 5k to 10k silver each. Spirit pouches however will make the majority of the sea monster drops but are valued at 10k each. The blue grade drops are higher value drops and are the ones you'll mostly want. These are valued from 10k all the way up to 250k depending on the items. These items can drop from the higher version sea monster or ship or the lower green grade guild items can be processed into the higher blue grades. Killing the Cox Pirate Ghosts are a great way to farm the usable pirate's remains that can vendor for 500k each. Now, for the more sought after and harder to get yellow grade drops, these can be vendored for 100k each at a guild shop. These drops have a 1.5% to an 8% chance of dropping from their monsters, so these will give a hard time.
time. Yellow Grey Guild Drops do have a higher weight, meaning they'll have to be stored on your ship. The Gold Month Ships also have the Golden Coins that can be vendored for 10k each and don't require you to have a guild to sell. As for the Rare Drops, Mana Stones can be sold on their own for 500k if you're lucky to find, and any artifacts can be melted down or the Imperfect Floral Light Stones can be sold. Other than the Guild Items and the Occasional Monster Junk Item, all the other items can only be used to upgrade your Carrick or ship parts and cannot be sold on the central market. Though they can only help with making money, they can't be sold for money, and sadly, they can only be exchanged for 99% less crow coins than what they're bought for. One more thing to keep in mind is the harder the sea monster is, the more spirit pouches or gold mon items that can drop, so hunting harder monsters will make more money. Killing sea monsters rewards some nice loot to those who choose to farm them, but for those who are struggling to kill those annoying little sea monsters, don't worry. There are a couple ways to start soloing sea monsters without needing to have a couple friends to help. Even before heading out to kill anything, your gear is important and your sailing mastery shouldn't be ignored. The higher your sailing is, the better your skills your ships have unlocked, and the better your ship stats will be when choosing a ship or just throwing on the parts. This allows a caravel like what I use to be able to kill most of the sea monsters, but using a Yeferia sailboat is the best. Using the ocean's embrace sailing can increase your sailing mastery and the experience to earn with a little investment. If you want to check out a guide on that, the video link will be in the top corner and I'll also put a link down in the description below, which I highly suggest pausing here and checking that video out. Now, the ship you use also affects how fast you can kill sea monsters, with the Bartali sailboat being the weakest ship. It's not going to be able to kill the normal Hikaru or Ocean Stalkers easily, but can still take on the hungry versions for those verdant black stones and use to upgrade. The Aferia sailboat does an okay job with the Caravel onwards, only able to kill faster with the blue enhanced ship parts. Using green enhanced parts will work, but as you can see, it's still slow. The best choice here is to invest in the Aferia frigate. They're better suited for ocean combat with a stock ship and way better when parts are added. Enhanced or the ship is just upgraded allowing harder sea monsters to be killed easier. Other than increasing mastery, getting a better ship, or just enhancing those parts to get your ship ready to kill some monsters, the only other way and the fastest way is to have a partner or a couple friends come out and help. Adding more cannons to a fight or better ships will quickly burn down those sea monsters with ease and you won't have to worry too much about the lack of Carrick or just better parts. For those who are still having trouble getting the knowledge for the sea monsters, certain NPCs can be spoken to after raising their amity to gain the knowledge. Shirim here has a Hikaru and small gold mont knowledge. Bindo has the Ocean Stalker. Gintabum has a Canadem and medium battleship. Moran has nine shark and the last gold mont battleship. Suinchi has the knowledge on the Black West and I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. All these NPCs can either be found at Alcala's Eye prior to the new region or will be in the northern part of the region. I hope this helps you start sea monster hunting sooner or just killing them easier. Being able to make millions an hour and having an easier way to upgrade those parts for bartering, just in case bartering isn't a thing for you, this is a great alternative but should be done alongside those sailing dailies or when bartering. Sailing around the islands or just killing the monsters won't quickly level you up to guru sailing but is a nice break from the usual lumbering or cooking. I've been trying to see how long it's going to take me to get my Carrick using the sea monsters and it's been helping out, especially with not having those 5k barters done yet. But as always, if you want to see how to level those life skills faster or just want to start making more money in Black Desert Online, click this video here and I'll see you in the next one.